The 5090 specs leaked. Oh my gosh. And guess what, guys? It's a Giga Chad GPU, 32 gigs of VRAM on this bad boy. We have to talk about it. The leaker is none other than Copite 7 Kimity. You sly dog, you. You really just come out with 5090, 5080 specs and just drop the mic. Look, he just texts them out here. That's it. Puts them out there for the world and leaves the rest to us. The 5090? What? Yes, dude, the 5090 is gonna be a Giga Chad GPU. They're giving it 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Boys, we gotta talk about it. <laughs> there was multiple options Nvidia could go with for the 5090. The conservative version that has 18,000 CUDA cores and the Giga Chad version that has over 21,000 CUDA cores. Like, this is almost the full die, guys. And it it's insane what they're doing here because it's gonna have a 600 watt TDP not only that, there's some leaks coming out that it's not going to take one 16 pin. Right here it says it takes one. There's some leaks coming out where it's going to take two 16 pins. So get ready for your house to burn down and your card to go up in flames. He's saying it's going to have 21,760 CUDA cores. And I'm going to bring this up on a list here. And that is 33% more CUDA cores than we've had before, guys. 21,760 CUDA cores, 512 bit bus guys, 512 bit. When's the last time we had a 512 bit bus? I think that was the art the GTX 690 and that was actually a multi-chip GPU. Both GPUs had 256 bit. I was looking and I think that's the last time we had a 512 bit bus. It is absolutely ginormous Giga Chad. This is just a Giga Chad card guys. 32 gigabytes of VRAM of GDDR7. We're getting 32 gigabytes, guys. This is gonna be an AI card. I'm calling it right now. This card is not for gamers. It's, I don't even think this is for content creators, guys. This is an AI card, and NVIDIA is gonna rank in that money. They saw the writing on the wall that AMD's not releasing anything in the high end, and they said, screw it. We're going all out with this 5090. You know, I know that that news for AMD recently came out, but NVIDIA has known that for quite a long time, I'm sure. 1,568 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Insane, that is 55% more than the 4090, which was over already at a staggering one terabyte of memory bandwidth. And then 600 watts, like we said, it could have two power connectors, guys. Not one 16 pin, but it melts, but two. And actually maybe having two power connectors dividing up that 600 watts will make it to where it won't melt with those tiny little wires. And maybe that will be a good thing, but one thing's for sure, you're gonna need another power supply, a new power supply, because there's no power supplies out now that have two 16 pins, at least to my knowledge. And I, I think they're making them now. And then like we talked about, 21,760 CUDA cores, and that's 33% more CUDA cores. Okay, let's just get into the 5090 estimates. In my video, we talked about how the 5090, at least that version, was gonna have 25% more CUDA cores. Well, now we're looking at 33% more CUDA cores. And not only this, now it's, you know, it's not confirmed, but this is a leak that 600 watts, so 33% more TDP and a 512-bit bus. So back here, I thought that it was actually going to be a little bit more modest at like a 400 and something bit bus and uh, similar TDP, but no, yeah, it's 448 bit. So it's even been upgraded from this and I can't really remember what I said here. So we'll just pull it up. I said the 5090 was going to be 25 to 45% faster in rasterization. And guys, I think with this updated news that we have from Copite 7 Kimmy here, I think that this 5090 is now, instead of being 25 to 45% faster, I think it's going to be anywhere from 35, maybe even 40 to 60% faster. Yeah, guys, that's right. I really do think the 5090, if it has these specs, could be up to 60% faster. And I know what you might be saying, like, but it's only getting 33% more CUDA cores. Well, it is. <laughs> That is true and CUDA cores don't always scale, but I think guys that at the low end, at the low end, these CUDA cores might scale. You know, I'm just gonna change this from, I'll change this to 55. 
35 to 55 and that's just a large range there but it all depends on that how that memory bandwidth is going to affect this gpu we're getting 55 percent more memory bandwidth and i think that that is really going to be a boon for the 5090 we could get up to 55 percent more performance and that's honestly just like tacking on another 3090 on top of a 4090. Like, think about that. You have your 4090 and you just SLI a 3090 to that and get no performance loss. That what That is what the 5090 is going to be. It's going to have 32 gigs of VRAM. It's going to be very nice. Uh, guys, we could even see up to 60%. This is my conservative estimate. I think, honestly, if I had to guess, that's a wide range. I'm just going to go with 45% more performance. Yeah, I think we'll see 45%. It could be more than this because allegedly we will get a 25% boost to clock speeds. So if that's the case, if we get three gigahertz on this thing, yeah, maybe we could see up to 60% more performance, guys. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy indeed. <sighs> Unfortunately, we have to get to the 5080. And boys, I have a lot to say about this 5080 here. Um, I mean, we're only getting 10,752 CUDA cores. Let's just scroll down to that. So that is only 10.5% more CUDA cores than the 4080, which was already severely limited in its CUDA cores compared to the 4090. And honestly, guys, if the 4080 was really supposed to be a 4070 based on its die size and in relation to the 4090, I think the 5080 is really like a 5060 Ti. <laughs> really, that that that's what I'm getting the vibe here. You know, 10% more CUDA cores, really, guys. Compared to Ampere, what we were getting with our die sizes, I think the 5080 would be like a 5060 Ti, if you get what I mean, what I'm saying. I know we're on TSMC 4 nanometer now, and it, things are a little bit more expensive, so we don't get as much die size per tier, but Honestly, guys, this is kind of unacceptable. If this is any more than one grand, it's DOA in my opinion. But yeah, we're also gonna get 784 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. That's 9% more. Um, like I said, only 10.5% more CUDA cores. And then we're getting a bump, a 25% bump to the power. And hey, maybe that will give this a little bit more juice. Honestly, if you overclock a 4080, Giving it more power doesn't really give it more performance. You know, you can usually hit like 2.7, 2.8 clock speed, and that's about it. And you can do that with the base TDP. But honestly, guys, like I said, this 5080 is DOA if it's above $1,000. Yeah, above $1,000, it's DOA, guys. Like, doesn't make sense. You could just buy last gen, and maybe that's what NVIDIA is trying to do with this is milk the high end, milk the AI bros, with the 5090, with all that VRAM and memory bandwidth. And then for us gamers, we have to settle for 10% more performance. And this will have 10, more than 10% performance. Let's see what I estimated actually. I said it was gonna be 25 to 35% faster and raster. Okay, and that is with it, with factoring in a three gigahertz clock speed or 20% boost. So. I mean, we're only getting nine. Dude, honestly, I think this is only gonna be 25% faster, to be honest, boys. I think it's only gonna be 25% faster, if that. And it could honestly even be less than that. And yeah, if, if it's more than $1,000, it's DOA. NVIDIA is just gonna be milking the gamers and giving us half, literally half of the CUDA cores on the 80 class. The 80 class is now the 60 Ti class, and you're just gonna have to get used to it, boys. You really are just gonna get have to get used to it. Now, uh, another thing is these are gonna have PCIe 5.0, um, 16 lanes of that, that's kind of cool. But really, the 5080 is super disappointing and the 5090 is glorious. Um, the 5090 will be an AI powerhouse. That's literally what NVIDIA is making this for. They're making it to pump their money bags and I guess, yeah, I could give the price for my 5090. I think the 5090 will be three grand now with having 32 gig, gigabytes of GDDR7. I don't see them pricing it below three grand, maybe 2,500. But honestly, guys, yeah. So long story short, RTX 5090, Ultimate Giga Chad, RTX 5080 is really like a 5060 Ti. 
and we're just gonna have to live with that. I'm not looking forward to the lower ends cards. I think the 5070 and the 5060 are just probably gonna be minor bumps after seeing this. Hopefully maybe the 5060 is a little bit better, but yeah, with the 5080 being that low in CUDA cores, I mean, how much farther can they push the 70 and 60 class up, you know? Cause they can't be faster than the 80. This leak is a very mixed bag for me, you know? On the one hand, I'm really excited about the 5090, but I know I won't be able to afford it. And the 5080 is just going to be another mediocre 80 class for us buyers. Some people may be upset that it only has 16 gigs of VRM. I don't think that's the main issue. I think the issue would be the memory bandwidth. So what do you think? Do you think we should get more CUDA cores in the 80 class? Do you think the 80 class should have 18, 19,000 CUDA cores right below the 5090 and just cost half as much? Silicon State, the master of tech. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs. He knows it all, no question too big, no detail too small.